not slope down like a hill. You can feel that with your cane and with your feet. You know you might be getting to the curb. And you know you get to the curb when your cane goes over the edge. And it did. And then I'm supposed to stop and listen. Make sure there's no cars. So I did. I listened, I listened. No cars. But then, oh, I heard a car. It was coming down the street to my left. It was going to go in front of me. So I waited. The car pulled up and stopped. It waited. We both stood there. <laughs> then Mr. Hip said, Kim, Kim, what do you need to do? I said, I need to wave him on. That's right. I knew how to wave him on. I took my hand and ran across my body, waving him on. He disappeared in the squeal of tires. The intersection was clear. I went across. And I felt the curb going up. And then as I stepped up on the curb, I heard a noise. I mean, the shh, shh, click, click. It was a sprinkler noise. Oh, it was a hot day. And who doesn't love to go in the sprinkler in the hot day? I would have to go in the sprinkler to get to the store. I walked across the grass. And sure enough, there I was, under the sprinkler. Then I said, I'm turning into a mermaid. I'm turning into a flower. Oh, wait, I had to get to the store. I had to concentrate. I came out of the sprinkler. I walked forward, and then I found the door leading to my store. She's more playful than Steph, although she's probably bored now. She's So I'm going to put it on so now she's got a uniform on. So she says, oh, I have to be careful. I have to watch. So when I hold on to this part, I can tell her, Tuli, come this way a second. Here, Tuli. See, look, Lucy, she, she's going here. Tuli, right? Right? Tuli, find the chair. Good girl. Look at you. Look at you, you're smart. So she knows like left and right and stop and forward means to start up. So it's kind of cool because then I just tell her which way I want to turn and she'll do it. And then when she's got her harness on, then she's not, she's going to ignore you probably. <laughs> Sometimes she does. Right? If it's someone she really knows, like your grand, she likes your grand. But, but are we supposed yeah. to pet her when she's no. got her harness on, Kim? No, because no. then she's, she's busy. She has to think. She has to remember. She has to think and listen really hard because she doesn't want me to fall or bump into things. Eh? Isn't that cool? She's a dog with a job. Yeah. And there's other ones with jobs, like hearing dogs and, and police dogs and fire dogs. Do they still have fire dogs? They do. I don't know that they have them anymore. Those are the they Dalmatians. Just, what did they do? Oh, they were just mascots, really? I guess they I were. So. Oh, how are you, Megan? Hi, hey, Liana. How are you? How was it? Oh, it was fun. Really fun. Children seem yes. to enjoy it very much. I think so, yeah. It was a long performance. It was, and I was a bit concerned for the ages <laughs> that it would be, but um, it's only, it's the first half of a whole show that I have for adults, but um, it, I think it was really good, and people seem to 
to like it. So I'm happy about that. This is Julia. How are you? <laughs> She's fine. I watched her while uh, you were... Uh, <laughs> she slept a little bit. Yes, but she behaved. She yeah. was amazing. <laughs> she was good. And uh, how um, how did you find the audience? Well, they were good. They were fun and uh, had really good questions. And obviously, we're engaged. I really like that. This performance, are you planning on um, taking it like a tour? Doing a I'd love to actually. I'd love to do the, this show, but also the whole show. I, li I really like doing the whole show because it, it takes it took me a long time to create it, and it took me a long time to. Um, get it together, you know, so that it's the more times I can do it, the better I like it. Uh, this performance was um, inspired from your own experiences. Yeah, I had a bunch of stories that I was telling separately, and I, 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 I wanted to put them into a whole. So I did get a grant from Canada Council for the Arts to create the show and um, that was good because I could take some time to really figure out how they could fit together. So that was, that was really helpful. And where do you go from here? Well, I'm going to try to market the show uh, more and also hopefully get to perform it more. And then I'm also trying to figure out whether I'd like to record it and sell it as a you know, as a digital play, um, you know, as a, a recording, a CD or or digitally, you know? Yes, yes. Well, Talia, it was nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you again. Thank you, Kim. And thank you for coming and thank you for recording for YouTube. Oh, yes, and this one will be on YouTube yeah, as well. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Artist Karen Bailey. Yes. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? Uh, it is so nice to finally meet you. I have been following the, your work. Um, it was sometimes I find it hard to, to really get a hold of the artist. So, what made you decide to come to this particular event? I think because I realized that my painting of Kim and Tulia spoke to the issue of human rights. I think uh, in today's society, I think as, as a, a blind woman, I think Kim wouldn't uh, be able to function if we didn't have uh, human rights to protect Oh, well, they protect the rights, they protect all of us, but I think in particular, um, people who are requiring a bit more assistance. And also, dogs having the rights here, too. It was nice of you to do both of them. Oh, they go there together. There was no choice. Yes, all the time. <laughs> so, uh, how do you find to, how did you feel when you were chosen to do this? Well, I was happy to do it. I, I'm a storyteller, professional storyteller, and I do a lot of uh, art myself as a storyteller, and I'm also a musician, so I know arts. So, it was fascinating. Karen was excellent at describing to me things in a way that I would understand them. In terms of the picture, she would try to equate things to arts that I would understand. And in terms of the process, we really realized that art, the process of art is the same no matter what your art is. You know, you have those moments where you can't quite get it, and then you have moments where it's perfect. And, you know, we talked a lot about process. And so I was honored, honored to spend time with Karen and to find out about how she works. <laughs> how many sittings did it take? How many sessions? Four or five? Five? five. Oh, that was good. Yes, and then I did some of the work when Kim wasn't at the studio, but um, basically it was the five sessions and she came for about an hour and a half Something each time. Like, yeah, I think so. A couple of teas included. And what? then I think one at first, Tulia was kind of moving around a bit, and, but once she got the idea that she would sit like this and get painted, the next time when Karen was working on me, Tulia was sitting up like, well, she takes me some more then, because I'm... I'm just going to show the portrait. Yes. It's right here. No, no, no. Um, you have beautiful hair in the... In the painting, <laughs> multicolored hair. Yes, it was your choice. 
No, I had no choice. <laughs> Karen liked painting me because I couldn't say, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> well, at least it's curly. Well, I don't have a choice of that either. But <laughs> no, in the painting. Yeah. So no, I I'm think sorry. it's because maybe Karen made it. I don't know. You'll have to ask her why she did that. Oh, yeah. May I ask you, how did you decide on the choices of colors? Well, I think that Kim is a colorful person, and I think especially when you think about all the energy things are going on in her brain and of course her hair is closest to her brain and I wanted those colors to be reflected, those really you know, vibrant reds and the greens and lots of energy um, that's coming out of, out of her head or from her head. Um, so I think all over the painting, that's why you'll see a little, there's a lot of warmth and a lot of spots of red because to me that's the energy coming through. Have you done other portraits of uh, people with uh, impairments? Uh, no, I guess the thing is, I did, Kim was the inspiration for the Storyteller series. And I should explain that it wasn't about human rights that I first started painting Kim. It was, maybe this sounds long-winded, but my husband and I, we raised a, a guide dog puppy, a guide dog for the blind puppy. And our puppy um, left us after 18 months and I was missing the puppy and I'd been to a performance of Kim's where she talks a lot about her guide dog puppies or guide dogs and so that's the main reason I have to admit I invited Kim to my studios because I really wanted to have a black lab guide dog come into the studio and Kim came with the guide dog <laughs> so and I realized that Kim is a fantastic mom so I'm going to paint her again. Yeah, she's going to, I think. There will be another one. Oh, yes, yes. When I could do a whole series on Kim, the Kim yes. and Tulia series. And I think, um, it, yeah, I think it's fascinating. And, and I think, like Karen said, this, this exhibit is so important because of human rights, um, service dog legislation, also the talk downstairs about the, the labels and people with disabilities. There are labels for us as well, you know, that, that we are um, suffering and, and afflicted and confined to wheelchairs and, and I mean people say I'm suffering from blindness. Well, I've been blind all my life. I don't suffer from that. That's not, that's normal for me. So, you know, labels come into it and I think a lot of this art can take away some of that um, because it's a piece of art that shows me as a, hopefully I can't see it, but you know, people like it and it's like a, an energetic person. I don't look like I'm sick or, you know, any kind of, not sick. No, no, but you know what I mean, that, that, yes. the, that people portray in the media or whatever on TV, they're portrayed in a certain way, so Karen has helped with that. And if I have helped with that too, in terms of the, the labels and that, that, that's very important to me. So Miss Bailey, where do you go from here? With this uh, painting, are you going to put it in a show or...? Well, first I'll tell you, it's in a private collection right now. Someone has purchased this work, but I'd certainly welcome the opportunity to show it at other times because I think the world should see it and the world should see more paintings of, of Kim and more paintings of Tulia and the two of them when they go hand in hand. So certainly watch this space. I would be happy to come and... Uh, interview for the second one. Uh, that would be wonderful if you would come to the studio while I'm painting because it, I think it's an interesting process both for the sitter and for anyone coming to visit to see what happens in the artist studio. Would that be okay with you if I came? Oh, I am happy with that. Oh, and also I'd be great if, um, you know, if I could send you, email you like the link to my blog and my web. And I will post stuff. it yeah, that on the website. Uh, on the video, perhaps we can wait for an interview just about you as an artist. That would be great. Okay, then uh, we can set up a meeting. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.